you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly, real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. On Friday 19th of April 2024, the Chicago Appeal Judges of the Seventh Circuit declared that after their thorough deliberations, they found it necessary to maintain and uphold the trial judge's decision to convict R. Kelly, even though the statutes of limitations for most of the charges against him had already expired years ago, and to maintain the issued 20-year sentence that was also decided upon by the same judge Harry Leinenweber. One would have thought that the appeal judges who should be more advanced than the trial judges would have more substantial reasons for taking decisions of this magnitude, and decisions that will certainly affect the life of the R and B King for all the years he is left to live on this planet. There is no doubt that issuing a 20-year sentence to a man in his mid-50s can be comparable to subjecting him to a life sentence and could abruptly end someone's life. It therefore should be premised on real important reasons for the appeal judges to have chosen to maintain this rather exorbitant sentence. It is rather sad to note that this trio of appeal court judges did not have any strong reasons for this, and that they too like the trial judges preferred to prejudice R. Kelly and advocate that he be locked up for the 20 years way above the standard sentencing guidelines range all for the wrong reasons. The two matters of contention were to do with the above guidelines range 20 year sentence, which according to R. Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean should have been way shorter, and the convictions that were made yet the statutes of limitations had already expired. While Bonjean recognized that these limitations had only recently been removed, her argument was that their removal did not erase the fact that they existed during the period the said crimes were allegedly committed, and that these had duly expired several years later before limitations were reviewed and amended. The appeal judges however felt that by issuing the 20-year sentence to be served concurrently with the 30 already issued in New York, the trial judge was lenient and therefore needed not reduce these 20 years by the months found to be in excess. Now this is the judges not being objective with the laws of this land. It helps nobody if in their opinion they believe the judge acted leniently. Their job here is to determine whether the judge followed the laws of this land when performing his tasks and he clearly didn't. The trial judge was obligated to follow the standard sentencing guidelines, and he was also supposed to respect the laws that existed back in the years considering there was reason why the statutes of limitations had been installed as safeguards. It is important to note that new amendments may be made to laws as we register technological advancements that can help maintain and verify evidence better, but these amendments do not necessarily change the previous circumstances in which the illegal actions are said to have been committed. This is why laws from the past must be upheld even if circumstances have changed and the same laws have been amended. The appeal judges however claim they chose to uphold these expired charges because R. Kelly did so much to block and prevent the accusers from reporting these alleged crimes during the acceptable period. And this means they also acknowledge the fact that the charges were already past their due dates, but nevertheless chose to maintain them on the assumption that R. Kelly obstructed justice, a crime for which he was duly acquitted by the jury. It's still hard to contemplate how the appeal judge just like Lyne and Weber also managed to infer that R. Kelly in fact obstructed justice, a crime which the jury concluded he did not commit, and for which they acquitted him together with his two co-accused. What they did was more like provide what they feel is a good reason for them to go against what the law says, and this has made the U.S. Justice Department look even worse off than it already did from what transpired in the trial courts. Well seasoned appeal judges follow what the law says and not what their feelings are about the situation. Our country has in fact slowly plummeted into a nation where justice can no longer be guaranteed. Justice has become a commodity of late that one has to buy. It's no wonder we see all these celebrities targeted during their old age when their finances have been greatly depleted and they cannot buy their own justice which is now clearly for sale. This is also why big corporations like Sony will always succeed in destroying artists when they make demands and want their money and intellectual property back. The corporation has all the money in the world to frustrate the justice system and cause artists financial loss, and sometimes even their demise like they did Michael Jackson. Sadly, we can only laugh at the Department of Justice for choosing to become agents of injustice rather than the justice they are meant to serve. They have done this country a disservice long enough, and sadly haven't learned from their past mistakes. 
Who knew that this country would currently be regretting the wrongful conviction of heavyweight boxing champion Jack Johnson? And why wasn't this example enough for the DOJ to review the way they conduct their operations? While Jack Johnson is being acquitted posthumous, they are busy committing even more legal mistakes still victimizing black celebrities. This is simply the very same injustice on our people carried forward, and this ought to be put to an end. According to James Morrison, it's indeed a shame to learn that the appeal judges have also joined the bandwagon of hating on R. Kelly rather than being objective and addressing the legalities at hand. It is in fact very tempting to prejudice R. Kelly, and these judges have also fallen victim of this great temptation. What they forget is that they are only mandated to protect the laws of this nation and not to serve their own emotions and nourish their sentiments. Judges are paid to be objective and not opinionated. Choosing to join trial judge Lyndon Weber in inferring that R. Kelly could have obstructed justice yet the jury decided otherwise is abuse of their own Department of Justice. Why allow a jury to operate and later on contempt their findings only because they favor the defendant? According to Zora Walker, In any case, like Bonjean suggested in her post on X, this was expected yet still very shocking and disappointing. There is one appealed judge who used her time during the hearing to simply threaten Bonjean, suggesting the matter could return to sentencing and R. Kelly gets an even worse sentence but gladly Bonjean didn't buy. According to Bonjean, the appeal process is meant to benefit the appellant and not the plaintiff. A worse sentence would therefore violate the intent of this appeal process. Now we know what this judge was actually trying to do. She was only checking to see if Bonjean understood that the laws actually protect the appellant in such a case so she could avoid this mistake going forward. We are simply not buying this conclusion, and surely we feel the matter should proceed to the Supreme Court which will most likely rule in favor of the R&B King. We are happy Bonjean is saying this is not over yet. The fight for R. Kelly's deserved freedom has indeed just began. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.